This is a web series we are busy running on the disillusionment of democracy in South Africa. This is episode three, and in this episode, we want to give consideration to how democracy has disillusioned the black African child. So stay around and enjoy this. So the moment you talk about how disillusioned the black African child has been by democracy in South Africa, you would start when the child is born and look at the early childhood development system that the country has. There's no centralized system. So the kid in the township and the kid in the suburb and the kid in between are all developed differently. Okay, so we don't understand why the ANC government has not considered a centralized early childhood development system. In any case, they are busy punitive ideas here and there, but nothing has materialized yet. So you realize that in recent surveys that the South African child has been scoring the worst in numeracy and literacy, especially between grade one and grade three. Even Zimbabwe, beaten down and out as it is, the kids there have been scoring better than South African kids. that the ANC democracy has not fully considered. And we don't understand why, because this is digging graves for the future of the country. If you are not developing your, our young kids, if you are not developing your young kids as a country, then you are not developing the future of the country. Okay, so there is an issue there that large and by the African child has missed out. So let's go a little bit beyond early childhood development and go to primary school. And there's a set of schools in the country. There's the rural, beaten down primary school that is public owned by government, where there's no running water, no, no sanitation. The kids are using pit, pit toilets and so on and there's a teacher here and there. Some of them are even under trees, and that is okay. Those kids still go to school, and they are being developed under those trees, and the teachers are doing their best under the circumstances. So that set of kids, no, number one. Set of kids, number two, there's the kid that is a little bit lucky, that goes to the former Modesty schools. They are full. Even townships that are near some of these modesty schools, they will fuel their kids through higher transport, so transport provided by the state, and they will take their kids to these former modesty schools. And some of them are very good schools. I've seen some of them in Houting here. Some are very good schools. The standard is quite nice, and so on. So there is that child that is lucky that has gotten into former modesty schools. And then there is another one in between the former modesty school and the very expensive top plus private schools here. So there are those that are lucky in between there. And the last one I would say is those that are the kids of the most of the diplomats and the rich and the powerful. And unfortunately, even the politicians who don't want to make consideration of changing the education system itself, most of their kids are finding their way into these expensive, high-quality, world-class schools like Crawford and them. So you will see that there's four sets of kids like I highlighted. And so you realize, therefore, that 
four sets of kids are each experiencing South Africa in their early years in school in three different forms of South Africa, based on the school, based on their race, based on their geography, based on whether they are urban or rural, based on whether they are still caught up in too early childhood geography of the apartheid and so on. They are experiencing South Africa differently. And this is impacting on their development. Now, let's talk about the socioeconomic conditions in which most of the black African child is growing in the new democracy, in the new South Africa. Most of the biggest number of the black African child, large and by, lives in the rural areas. And these are kids that are growing on the government grant. The government is doing very well by providing this grant, and we appreciate it, NC government. Thank you so much for this grant. But we believe that these kids deserve better than the grant because their socioeconomic conditions cannot just be improved by PAP. They cannot just be improved by a meal provided at the primary school where they go. They cannot be improved just by the transport that the state is providing, okay? Until the situation of the parent is addressed, where government considers addressing rural development and developing rural areas, it is going to be difficult for these kids to then come out of their situations. It's going to be very, very difficult because if a parent does better, the child automatically will do better. It goes without saying, because the child takes on large and by the class and the socioeconomic condition of the parents, large and by. That's what that is. So until government comes up with a proper South Africa rural development strategy and plan, and they start to provide better schools, and they start to provide better housing, better infrastructure in the rural areas, these kids are doomed. God forbid they are doomed. They are growing in a South Africa that does not exist if you talk to their federal counterparts in urban areas. This South Africa does not exist. And so it's unfortunate that the socioeconomic conditions are hurting the black African child, especially those in the rural areas. Okay, number two, then there is the urban poor. There's the kids that are growing in the urban areas, but in slums in the urban areas. Okay, because you can't say that Alexander is rural. Alexander is urban, but it's an urban slum. You cannot say that Timbisa is rural. Timbisa is urban, but it's an urban slum. And so these kids are experiencing life differently from their counterparts in the suburbs. They experience life very, very, very different because there are socioeconomic conditions in which those kids are growing in the townships and the socioeconomic conditions in which these kids are growing in the suburbs is two different sets of environment. And the environment does a lot in shaping the thinking, the understanding, the character and the development of the child, especially in their early years. So the ANC government, commendable as they can be for the RDP houses and all the good things they have done, there's still a missing link that the socioeconomic conditions in which the majority of the black African child is growing in is unacceptable. Caution and say the state could defend itself and say, but we cannot parent your kids. Where are the parents? And so I'm speaking to parents now and I'm saying to parents, large and by, some parents have been very irresponsible, some of them, with their kids. I mean, the biggest number of young boys in South Africa growing home without a father. The statistics are very, very high. Some say five out of every ten. Some say even higher than that. 
boys are growing without the dad at home. Can we blame this on democracy? Not entirely. I can just say that the men that are doing a very good job in looking after these boy, boys are commendable. And those that are irresponsible, you are adding to the pain. And you are adding to the salt of the disillusionment that these kids are experiencing because of democracy. The majority of them are getting skills that are not aligned with industry. And so the, this country has the highest youth unemployment in the world. Those that are making it through Tibet and those that are making it through university, the biggest number, the black African child is still seated at home, still no jobs. Why? Because large and by the education system and industry are not in alignment. So the kids are not employable. They are not employable because the skills that they are getting large and by is not the skills that industry is looking for. And this, squarely, we should blame on the NC government because what is stopping them from sitting in Cape Town and drop, draft policies and then try and come up with an education system that is in line with the industry. But even if you were just to look at just the ANC structures or the civil service itself, you will find that there's not so many young people in positions of influence. There's not a lot of them. So the ANC, if you are 40, then you are young. 45, that is young. Because large and by most of the systems are run by older big wigs of the NC with a, a history of the struggle. So the African child is still seated on the, on the, on the sidelines. Some have formed political parties. And this is helping to absorb a lot of them into the system because we know how the youth league of the NC was dismantled by the Zuma era. And so, by the Zuma era. And so, that destroyed large and by a system that had been there for many, many years, absorbing young people into the ANC. So, young people are not finding themselves even into structures of the ANC, large and by. And out of time, I enjoyed talking to you. And I enjoyed especially talking to you how disillusioned the young African child will be with the NC democracy. Like I said, this is episode three. I hope you look out for episode four. And I hope you continue to watch this series, Democracy, a Disillusionment to South Africans. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and ring the bell so that you are always notified every time there's new content. And remember to leave a comment about this video, do you believe the African child has lost out? Do you believe the NC has done very, very well for the young African child? Do you believe the NC is liable and therefore responsible for the youth unemployment? Or you disagree? Leave a comment below. I will see you again in my next video. In episode 4. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.